the diaphragm the diaphragm is a musculo fibrotic or musculo aponeurotic partition or sheet like structure intervenes between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity or in very simple words the diaphragm is dividing the torso in upper thoracic and lower abdominal cavity So, the diaphragm or known as thoracoabdominal diaphragm, it is sheet like structure, concave in the abdominal surface and concave on the thoracic surface. It is having two domes, the right dome and the left dome, between the right and lap domes there is a depression. The right dome of the diaphragm is higher to the lap dome of the diaphragm because the right dome is roofing the large abdominal organ the liver. So, diaphragm is made up of two domes the right dome and the lap dome. The right dome is higher than the left dome due to large abdominal organ or the largest organ of the body, the liver. <coughs> Sorry. So, diaphragm is taking its origin. This is the part of its origin. It is having highly oblique circumferential. <coughs> it is having circumferential highly oblique origin from the thoracic outlet that is the thoracic outlet formed by the sternum, the ribs and the lumbar vertebrae or the lowermost part of the thoracic and uppermost part of the first lumbar vertebra. So, diaphragm is having its origin because it is a striated or skeleton muscle and it is having its origin in aponeurotic part known as the central tendon. This is the lower part of the sternum and this is the sword like gephoid process and these are the lower ribs. This is the 10th, 9th, 8th <coughs> and 7th ribs. So, it is taking its origin from 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th. This is the 11th vertebra thoracic. So, this is the 11th rib. This is the floating rib not attached on the sternum or the costal cartilage the 12th vertebra and this is the 12th rib. This is also floating rib. So, this is not attached on the vertebra.
this is the vertebra L1, L2. So, this is the circumferential outlet of the thoracic cavity formed by the 10th rib, 11th rib, 12th rib, costo cartilage of the 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th ribs and the 12th thoracic vertebra and the anterior part is the highest part of the thoracic outlet formed by the gyphoid process or the gyphi sternum. So, this is the highly oblique circumferential part of origin of the diaphragm. The diaphragm is taking its origin from sternum. So, it is having the external part, it is, is having the coastal cartilage part and the part of ribs and it is also having its origin from the vertebra or the lumbar part. So, there are three parts of origin. The external part the coastal part and third is the vertebral part. The vertebral part is also known as the lumbar part. Because it is taking its origin from the first lumbar vertebra and the two crura which are attached on the L1, L2 and L3 vertebrae. So, external part is anterior most part and it is the highest part and it is giving two slips of aponeurotic origin of the diaphragm running backward and horizontally. The coastal part is very <laughs> long part <coughs> sorry, and the fibers are running medially and backwards and medially and anteriorly from the posterior part of the ribs. This is the lower part in comparison to the external part or xiphoid part and the lumbar part is also lower part and situated lower than the external or xiphoid part because it is taking origin from the L1 and L2 vertebra. So, this is the origin of the diaphragm. So, what is the origin of this is the transfer section of the diaphragm and we are seeing the abdominal surface of the diaphragm.
So, this is the transfer section of the diaphragm. This is the zephoid process. This is the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and this is the twelfth rib. So, this is the eleventh and this is the tenth rib. Here also the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, and eleventh. This is the twelfth rib. So, this is the highly oblique circumferential origin of the sheet like skeletal muscle, the thoraco abdominal diaphragm. This is the origin of the diaphragm from two aponeurotic slips from, from the xiphoid process. These are the slips coming from the ribs. These ribs which are taking origin from 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th ribs are running medially towards the central tendon and the fibers which are coming from the 9th rib are the longest fibers. The digits which are coming from the ribs are interlacing or interdigitating with the other muscle, the transverse abdominis muscle. So, fibers which are running from the ribs are interlacing or interdigitating with the fibers of the transverse abdominis muscle. So, these are the fibers of the transverse abdominis muscle. Now, these are the fibers taking origin from the zephoid process and these are the coastal fibers. The fibers or the vertebral fibers are taking origin from the L2 and L3 vertebra, L1 L2 and L3 vertebra. There are two aponeurotic slips. Right one is broader and longer, left one is narrow and shorter. This is the right crust and this is the left crust of the diaphragm. This is the left crust of the diaphragm. The right crust is attached on the bodies and the intervertebral disc of L1, L2 and L3 vertebra, L1, L2 and L3 vertebra because it has to descend during deep inspiration, it's, it has to descend the large abdominal organ, the liver. So, it is strong, long and broader one in comparison to the lap cross of the diaphragm. The lap cross is attached on the L1 and the L2 vertebrae. Between the to crura, there is a aponeurotic slip 
arching over anterior to the abdominal aorta. This is the abdominal aorta. So, this is the aortic opening and it is a round or oval shaped opening bounded by the left and right crura anteriorly by this median arcuate ligament. This arch between the medial end of the medial and the medial end of the left and right crura is known as median arcuate ligament. So, this is the median arcuate ligament and the opening frankly speaking this opening of the aorta is not inside this sheet like musculotendinous diaphragm. It is outside the diaphragm. But when we talk about the openings of the diaphragm, we consider this opening in the diaphragm for descriptive purpose only. This opening is at the level of the 12th thoracic vertebra. This is the opening of the aorta. The muscle, the swast major muscle, this is the swast major muscle, some fibers of the swast fascia, some fibers of the swast fascia are bridging across, bridging across the muscle and forming medial arcuate ligament. This is medial arcuate ligament or medial lumbocostal ligament. This ligament is attached, this is arch, this is uh, medial arcuate ligament or medial lumbo costal arch. The medial end is attached on the lateral part of the right cross of the diaphragm and the lateral end it attached on the tip of the transverse process of the L1 vertebra. The arching over or the bridging across the quadratus lumborum muscle by the anterior layer of the thoraco lumbar fascia is known as lateral arcuate ligament or lateral lumbo costal arch. So, this bridging of this quadratus lumborum muscle by the anterior layer of the thoraco lumbar fascia is known as the lateral arcuate ligament. We can see here the attachment, the medial attachment of lateral arcuate ligament is on the tip of the transverse process of the first lumbar vertebra and the lateral end is attached on the lower part of middle part of the 12th rib. So, this is the lateral and this is the medial arcuate ligament and this is the median arcuate ligament. So, median, medial and lateral arcuate ligaments. When we see here, we can see 
a trunk having ganglia. This is the sympathetic trunk and here we can see the subcostal vein the subcostal artery and the subcostal nerve it is bringing the anterior primary rami of the 12th thoracic spinal segment and the right cross is pierced by the greater and the lesser splanchnic nerves. So, we can see in the posterior part, this is the 12th rib, the lateral, medial and median are quiet ligaments. The lateral or quiet ligament is also known as the lateral lumbo costal arch. The medial or quiet ligament is also known as medial lumbo costal arch and this is the aorta. The right cruise, left cruise of the diaphragm, the medial and lateral or quiet ligaments of the diaphragm. Now, the fibers from the right cruise arching backwards and there is bifurcation of this fiber. These fibers are arching backwards and splitting of these fibers. These fibers from the right cruise will form the suspensory ligament of the duodenum and these fibers will also form after splitting an opening. This is the opening for the esophagus. This is the opening for the esophagus and it is 1.5 or 1.25 to 1.5 centimeter left to the median line. So, this is the opening of the esophagus. Now, the fibers which are running medially and upward from the coastal from the lumbar or vertebral are crossing in the middle part and these are inserted in an aponeurosis. This aponeurosis is trifoliate. This is trifoliate aponeurosis having three leaves the right, the middle, and the left. Between the right and the middle leaf, there is an opening again, opening at the level of the 8th thoracic vertebra or on the junction of the 8th and the 9th thoracic vertebra. This is the opening of the inferior vena cava. Inferior vena cava and it is on the level of the 8th thoracic vertebra or at the junction of the 8th and 9th. This is the opening of the esophagus at the 10th thoracic vertebral level. So, fibers are crossing in four planes. Fibers which are coming here, which are coming here, coming from this direction and coming for this direction. So, smallest fibers are the fibers which are coming from the gyphoid and the longest fibers which are coming from the ninth costal, ninth 
coastal cartilage and the ninth rib. So, this is the diaphragm, fibers are running and forming the sheet like striated muscle and it is having three big openings. Opening for the aorta for the esophagus and towards right, 2 5 centimeters right from the median plane, the opening of the inferior vena cava. When we take deep breath or during deep inspiration like this, the opening of the inferior vena cava, this is quadrilateral and this is ellipsoid opening. It widens and during inspiration, more blood is reaching in the right atrium and in the lungs. But at the same time, when we deeply take deep breath, this opening enlarges or broadens. But this opening of the esophagus is constricted and it will not allow the passage of the food during the deep inspiration. So, during the deep inspiration, there are two phenomena occurring on the opening of the inferior vena cava and opening of the esophagus. This opening is widened and this is constricted at the time of the deep inspiration. During the time of exercise, when we exercise, there is deep inspiration and expiration. So, more blood, more return of the blood to the right atrium and more blood is reaching towards the lung for the oxygenation during exercise. So, these are the big opening. Besides these big opening, there are some small openings. There is a gap between the gyphoid and the seventh rib. This is known as space of Larry. And this is allowing the superior epigastric vessels. When this opening is enlarged, this is the space of the larry. When this space is enlarged, this is known as the foramen of the Morgagni. This is known as the foramen of the Morgagni. Sometimes it will lead to herniation of the abdominal organ inside the thoracic cavity. So, this is the foramen of the Morgagni. Some small other small openings. The esophageal opening is also having the anterior and posterior vagal trunks. The anterior vagal trunk is formed by the left vagus and the posterior vagal trunk is formed by the right vagus. Due to rotation of the lower part of the esophagus, the stomach due to 90 degree rotation, the left vagus becomes the anterior vagal trunk and the right vagus becomes the posterior vagal trunk. Besides iota, it is also having the thoracic duct and the azygous vein. Sometimes azygous vein may open in the right cross of the diaphragm. The inferior vena cable opening is also having some small tiny branches of the phrenic nerve and it is also having some vessels related to the diaphragm. The left cross of the diaphragm is related to the bare area of the esophagus and stomach and it is attached to the ligament known as phrenico-esophageal ligament. Phrenico-esophageal ligament which is passing in this opening of the esophagus. When we see the sagittal section, the openings of the diaphragm are like this. So, this is the sternum, this is the diaphragm. 
this is the opening of the inferior vena cava. This is the opening of the esophagus. And the posterior most, this is the vertebra. So this is the opening of the aorta. So when we see the sagittal section, the posterior most is the aorta, anterior to the aorta is the esophagus and anterior most is the opening of the inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava is having no thoracic course. It will directly open in the right atrium of the heart. When we see the diaphragm in this view, this is the right and this is the left dome and the summit of the right dome and left dome is known as cupola. So this is the cupola, right cupola and this is the left cupola. Just above and adherent to the diaphragm is the fibrous pericardium. So inferior vena cava is directly draining in the right atrium. It is having no thoracic course. So fibrous pericardium is firmly attached to the central tendon of the diaphragm. This lower part is related to the right lobe and the left lobe of the liver. This part is related to the esophagus and this is related to the fundic, fundic part of the stomach. This is the small or lesser omentum. So these are having the right and the left pleury. So we have seen lot of anatomy of the diaphragm, the origin, the insertion in the central tendon, the two crura of the diaphragm, the medial and the lateral arcuate ligaments and the openings in the diaphragm. In my next lecture, I will talk about the blood supply, nerve supply and the hernias in the diaphragm.